as they say. In the spirit of Stonewall, we are taking over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, if you're a cop, watch your ass. <laughs> so, um, I came up with this idea because this is the 50th anniversary of Stonewall Rides. For any of you who don't know, the Stonewall was a bar in New York in the West Village that was raided regularly by the cops, run by the mafia. It was illegal to serve liquor to a queer person. It was a state law. It was also illegal to do drag. You could be arrested and thrown in jail for it. Um, and the mafia ran the bars, and the way that they got away with it was they paid off the cops. If they missed their payment, the cops would raid the bar carry out anybody who didn't have proper ID or anybody they didn't like the looks of, and then their names would be published in newspapers the next day so they would lose their jobs and their families and everything else. And that's the times that we, that was the context for not only Stonewall, but there were several riots before Stonewall that didn't give birth to the movement that Stonewall gave birth to. So I just felt like um, in this wonderful location here at Sacred Grounds, I thought it would be good if the three of us as gay male poets and also as poets I think who've inherited that legacy of Stonewall to just do whatever we want to do. Um, there's really no formula here. There's, it's just going to be us reading poems and saying whatever we want to say, but all in the context of 50 years after a riot that changed the world and how the world sees not only us, but I think it's affected straight people as well as queer people. Uh, certainly has opened up um, the doors around gender and gender identity and shown us that gender is not a binary. Um, so I think maybe I'll kick it off. Right. So I thought I would kick it off with um, a, little, a little something that talks about what the world was like in 1969. I was a taboo subject. The love that dare not speak its name. A topic unfit to be discussed in polite company, a mental illness, a sin, the product of an overprotective mother and weak or absent father, a threat to Western civilization, a symptom of capitalist or bourgeois decadence, a gay agenda. A pervert, deviant, limp-wristed, sissy pansy. A vice. Someone who only came out at night. A gay cancer. A threat to marriage and the family. Something no one would ever want to be. Wow. Great plan! Great plan. Great plan. Great plan. Stonewall. What does it take to make a stone wall crumble and turn it from brick to sand? Hand in hand, in defiance, they took a stand against the man. What does it take to make a stone wall tumble, leaving a pile of gravel and grain? The demand for basic rights, despite the mental and physical pain. What does it take to make a stone wall rumble? Lesbian, gays, and trans took to the street to fight the police when they only came to dance. What does it take to make a stone wall stumble? Smashing of rocks and blocks to dust? The true expression of gay liberation lies in the struggle, not just the lust. What does it take to make a stone wall tumble and shake it to its core? It can happen any time people finally decide to not take it anymore. Is it like you? These are the dark angels. In love, we meet through choices, in a limbo of confusion to consecrate the present, the only triumph. Some future moment waits on this, how we can weigh frenzy in the fruit. We journey from dark into dark on our own feet, 
drawn by the first spring odors of Narcissus and Hyacinth. Shaped by pasts we select to learn from, oriented, disoriented by experiences, we come to clinging to inviolable pros and icons and longing to put our feet by family simply crudely. It's necessary to accept the dark angels tomorrow's promise. Tommy. Yes. <laughs> um, this is called gender blur. I love blurring, leaving shadows of things in my wake. Like that nude descending the stairs, I'm fully exposed. People can't see the nakedness. They imagine I'm a mystery. I couldn't be more obvious. I shed gender like a snake. I spin a cocoon when I need to transform. Fluidity is a gift that was stolen from us, beaten out of us, condemned by religion, by social norms. There are more things in heaven and gender than dreamt of in your philosophy. I won't go away to make you feel more comfortable. I've done that in the past. It's time you simply get used to it. Oh. Yeah. Great call. Great call. I'm giving you an idea about what's going on. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. There you go. They say, How can you be black and gay? They say. Choose one or the other way, they say. The way you're living will disgrace the family name, they say. We don't want to see you get sick and die of AIDS, they say. Jesus loves you, sinner, now come get saved, they say. You know you're causing your mama pain, they say. If your daddy had known, he'd be rolling in his grave. They say, that punk ass shit is just a white man's game. They say, marriage between man and woman is the only way. They say, being a sissy is the furthest from being brave. They say, they're not in denial. They just hate your lifestyle. But they love you anyway. Or so they say. Make haste, the ear will be deaf. I watch a tongue of blue flame I am passing onto the darkness. Make haste, the ear will be deaf. I rode my little white pony. I could not reach the bell. It was so very beautiful. Dreaming saved me from sadness. I made my way to the gardens while the heart beats bruise it. My father thought me an odd child. He was uninfluenced by the weather. He wanted to buy my head. I was very stupid about machines. He prisoned me in schools. I went to expensive teachers. I, I didn't care why water went downhill. My father, he would not let go. <clears throat> Dreaming saved me. Dreaming saved me from sadness. When I was 14, I learned to love my friend. But then he went away. He vanished out of my life. He went like sunlight on water. I became a mountain of ice. Make haste, the ear will be deaf. There was silver silent wind. The river was a sheet of steel. Dreaming saved me from sadness, and that was over. The thirst was gone. I rode my little white pony. It is so very beautiful. I watch a tongue of blue flame. I am making my way to the gardens. I cannot reach the bell. 
while the heart beats, bruise it, make haste, the ear will be deaf. The rules of chaos travel to the line's end. Reasoning animals clutch organic wares, experimenting in social soil, for had you been hatched differently, you might have drowned in learning trees. And some mad parent triumphed. <laughs> So, um, what is that, 11 minutes? Yeah. Okay, we have 11 minutes, guys. Yeah, just, uh, I'm going like this so you can tell. I, yeah. mean, I don't have to say anything more. Yes. <laughs> That's the guy behind the curtain. <laughs> we have to pay attention to him or we'll never get back to Kansas. <laughs> um, so, um, 50 years after Stonewall, I actually have to confess that I, I um, look in horror at what our pride parades have become. They used to be marches, they used to be protests. The first one that I helped organize in 72, back in Philadelphia, my hometown, one of our demands was an end to the Vietnam War, an end to the draft, you know, an end to capitalism. We were, we were part of all, every movement, and we were coming out of every movement. I had been marching in civil rights movements from the time I was a teenager, and um, I was involved with SDS on campus. And so we were coming out of all these other movements, and so we had a good sense of the interconnect, uh, what did they say, that interconnectedness? Yes. Interconnectivity. There you go, of, of, of our movement with everybody else. Anyway, we now have, 50 years later, pride, and this is my thoughts on pride these days. My pride is defiant and raw. It's not polite. It isn't marketable. It won't show up in the Dow Jones averages. It's not running for office or joining the police force, the military, the church. It won't cooperate with the FBI, CIA, or Homeland Security. It doesn't put kids in cages tear gas asylum seekers, or criminalize the homeless. It knows that changing laws and electing politicians is not enough. It's not a ribbon, a flag, a beer, or a hashtag. It isn't trending or being tweeted. It's not a Russian bot or a meme. It's not going shopping or something I ordered online. It doesn't stay in an Airbnb or call a lift. It doesn't have a buffed body, a designer wardrobe, or a supply of party drugs. It doesn't let me forget the murdered gay men and trans women of color, the years that gay sex and drag were illegal, or how this nation stood by and let my friends die. It understands that no matter how much things seem to change, I'm still not safe. My pride is ever on guard and always in your face. I'm a solo homo sapiens, a star slowly fading from sight. I'm home and all alone on the range, a stranger in the middle of night. I'm a slow game of poker, trying to decide which cards to play. Holding a royal flush and joker, hiding my hand with stonewall face. I'm a cool shower or hot soak, a clear statement or murky riddle. I'm an up after hours, stay at home, one and only homie in the middle. I'm an endangered black man. I live with a bull's eye on my back. I'm a break a few rules, old school papa. I got the fever and a brand new bag. I'm a bitch a fairy, a fruit, and a fag. 
I'm all the taboo names they say. I've been homo, sissy, and butch queen in drag, marching in the rainbow flag parade. I'm a black cat, poet activist. I'm a senior seeking change. I'm a seasoned homo sapiens, burner of the midnight flame. I'm a hometown, homegrown homebody, hanging home alone on the range. His name was David, and he would have been 50 the week after he died by the hand that ripped out the shunt implanted in his chest. The shunt so that the needles could be inserted into the heart veins, because those in his arms and legs by now had collapsed. David had been an outdoor worker, big and lusty, before he acquired immune deficiencies, surrendering his body to every invasion. When he was 44, just short of his 45th birthday, he entered into a long-term love with a 25-year-old man named Bill. Call me Bill. The third year, he began his death journey that he completed last month. The week before he died, he'd invited his special friends to celebrate and say goodbye to another California 49er. And the next Saturday, he gathered his pills and told the 30-year-old now goodbye and asked him to come back in two hours and to call the police. Well, it was time to die. When I came back at three, you can call me Bill, uh, he shouted from behind the bathroom door it was taking longer and to go away again. Please, Bill, please. The pills they'd given him were weak or slow. Then in the warm tub, thin man now in commanding water, hair patchy, lower limbs wasted away, David ripped out the tubes to his heart. Oh, wow. 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 Four minutes. Oh. Yeah, wrap it up. Real, real quick poems. No, no. No, no, got a really short one. So, um, this is in our little anthology from here. An anthology from here. Yeah, Sacred <laughs> Browns anthology. And this is um, kind of my anthem these days. They told me not to touch myself, not to love another man, not to want to have control of my own body. They told me I must be a man, never a woman. Act and dress a certain way, never be neither or both. They told me I must wave the flag, kneel in prayer, work hard, believe I'm free. They told me never speak up, never challenge anything, because this is the way it's always been. They told me I was sick, cited diagnostic manuals, religious texts they had written. They told me I didn't know what was best for me, but I knew enough not to listen to them. <laughs> All right, survivors. From Stonewall to Disco to Bath House to AIDS. From marginalization to police raids, liberation, pride parades. We've come a long way, baby, with a long way left to go. Though we've lost too many along the way, so many not here anymore. We have survived to fight for the right to simply be, to love who we choose and live with dignity. We move past violence and disease, ridicule and shame. We are the ones that still remain. Mm -hmm. Hi. Nice. Yeah. The early grape. We are the early grape. Flat, dry, and cloudy, and the time is short. But some days never end. There is no joyous lake. There is no incantation that can bend the moment back 
into patterns we may see too late. Wait for tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. Wait for tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. And three's a crowd, the spunky ones the cream in your coffee. I know, I know, we said. That's the thing. Do it. Do it now. Early wine is flat, dry, and cloudy, and some days never end. There is no joyous lake. There is no incantation that can bend the moment back into the patterns we may see too late. That's all, folks. All right, give it a nice round. Come on, that was great. Bravo! There we go, nice!